Hi, today I'll be showing you how to dominate every single game during the laning phase on Syndra. Let's get right into it. There are two pages, which is just representing each keystone that you can run on Syndra right now, which is basically Airy or Electrocute. Now, there are some scenarios where you can run Phase Rush, but if you have to go Phase Rush, it's just dodging. So, keystone-wise, Airy is a significantly shorter cooldown. It's about 6 seconds versus the 20 to 25 that is Electrocute. If you're in a shorter range matchup, or against a melee entirely, you pretty much want to go Airy because you can infinitely cycle through on every single one of your skills. Mana Flow Band for the additional Mana Pool plus Mana Sustain. Transcendence for the additional haste to stack up balls or just have your E on a lower cooldown. And then Scorch is just free damage on every single skill that you cast. Secondary page, you're going to be running Cheap Shot or Taste of Blood. Cheap Shot if you're in a free matchup or you have a bunch of Snowball potential. If you're in a longer range matchup where you need additional healing, then you can take Taste of Blood. It just depends on how heavy you're going to get poked. Finally, Relentless Hunter gives you the ability to rotate around the map, get into lane faster, or just catch up to people and cast stun. If you're in a max range matchup, you're going to run double adaptive, otherwise take attack speed for additional lane wave clear, and then adaptive force, and then armor MR based on what the matchup is. Secondary room page is going to be Electrocute. This is specifically if you are going for one shot all in, or if the other matchup is just too long range for you to realistically apply airy consistently. Now the cool thing about this is even though it's a longer cooldown, it does significantly more damage than airy, so it does give you the ability to do a lot of burst, but once again, Mob, Force of Nature, a bunch of items that make this Rune Pinch kind of useless. Cheap Shot or Taste Blood based on the matchup. Eyeball Collection for additional AP. Relentless to roam and just get in position faster. And then Secondary Page, it's pretty much going to be Mana Flow Band or Transcendence. Mana Flow Band Scorch. Some scenarios you might even go for Gathering Storm, just depends on matchup. And of course, Attack Speed or Adaptive. And then your, your Magic Resist or your Armor based on matchup. Now theoretically, if you are going Ludens... You can technically swap over to Inspiration Secondary and go Biscuit and Cosmic Insight. This gives you more often Flash, Ignite, TP, and does give you a little bit more lane sustain. But realistically, you're just going to find a lot more value from a Hunter if you're playing the game correctly. But of course, this is really good with Ludens. So it just happens to be that way. But you'll see here that Seapot is taken a few times. Statistically, D-Ring is just better in every way now. If you are going to be going Seapot, you might as well just buy the refillable potion as your second purchase anyways. This is because this costs you 500 gold and it gives you 300 health per recall. Refillable is 150 but it gives you 200 and you're not fucking your itemization. Because you're not getting actual damage out of this. You do get the 15 burn and all that but like just get 15 AP, 70 health, uh, mana drain from hitting people and then also just the damage to minion. D-Ring is just statistically a better item, it's crazy. As for items, as you can see Ludens is basically best in slot, it has the most game sample size, highest pick rate, as the Pretty much best win rate specifically because this item synergizes with Syndra the most. There are games where you will be forced to build another item despite Ludens being the best option. That is typically going to be against melee assassins like Zed, Silas, or other things where Everfrost would technically be a better purchase. Uh, if you're forced to go crown, just dodge. I, I really care. Just do not ever play this item realistically. But bread and butter is pretty much going to be Ludens. There are some games where you're against 9,000 tanks, at which point Leandre's would be more effective. It's just a really good item, but as you can see, the win rate's lower because if you're playing Syndra, a burst mage, and the tanks, it's not going to look good statistically. In terms of boots, you're pretty much always going to go Sork Boots. Lucidity is very, very hard to use for the average player, and it's technically not even that great. So Sork Boots pretty much always. Some rare scenarios where you go Merc Treads, but pretty much you're going to go Sorks no matter what because you're a dopamine gamer, and that's fantastic. In terms of second item, you're going to see here that Shadow Flame is by far super performance with the highest pick rate, highest win rate almost. And that's just because Shadow Flame is an item that rewards you for snowballing. It kind of drops off at the 23 to 25 minute mark because then it's outvalued by Void Staff. So when you're playing an early game champion that requires you to snowball, Shadow Flame ends up being a very strong item. If you're in a matchup where you are against something that is very, very high mobility and very high damage, like Zed, Kiana, you're pretty much forced to go Zhanya's. You can skip it technically for the magic penetration item, which would be Shadow Flame or Void Staff. Very rarely will you go Seraph's. Seraph's is kind of an item that is very, very weird to itemize on Syndra because it delays your penetration item, and the stats are decent on her. But once again, it's just a scenario where it's not ideal stats for her. But I get a lot of people ask me about running tier on Syndra, and it's really just not worth it. You can build the tier if you really, really want, but I wouldn't really ever realistically build Archangel on Syndra. 
In terms of third item, you'll see that the Void Staff win rate goes up massively just because at third item, this is when everyone starts building Magic Resist against you. Their first two items are typically going to be damage, and then they start itemizing Magic Resist, which is why Void Staff is such a high win rate as a third item. Now, this is also basically the exact same win rate as Zanya's. Zanya's is a really good item because it enables you to play aggressively and take advantage of the fact that you do a shit ton of damage when you're running 50 Magic Pen from Ludens, Sword Boots, and Shadow Flame. Vice versa, you can also go Rabadon's Death Cap if you're extremely ahead. You'll see some niche items like Banshee's Veil here, which is pretty good. Do not ever build Morellos unless your team is absolute dog shit. I will never respect you again. And fourth item and so forth is basically describing whatever item you didn't get based on context. If I were to go, for example, I went Ludens, Zhanyas, and Arabidons, of course I'm going to need Penetration. If I went Double Penetration, I would obviously my Zhanya or my death cap at this point. Now, underrated thing here is you should be building Dark Seal every single game. Dark Seal is the best item in the game. You don't have to upgrade it to a Mejize. You just need to recognize the fact that Dark Seal costs 350 gold. And gives you 55 AP, which is basically the equivalent of a needlessly large rod. You're going to play an early game champion that excels in laning phase, and you are not buying a Dark Seal on first recall. You're griefing. Now, obviously, you should be buying a D ring, two pots as your first itemization. Makes sense, right? Hates mages. They give us an item that's crying and called torment. <laughs> yep. Welcome to League of Legends. Great auto for auto, but I got taste of blood. Huge. Right, we actually gotta hit a few minions just so they don't all die at the same time, otherwise I will not be able to last hit them all. Oh, this person is. <laughs> I am taking minions right now, but my Q cooldown is much shorter, so it's fine. His E is probably about 11, 12 seconds. Shortest it could be is 8, I just don't remember. Mine's a 4 second CD. I could have definitely EQ'd him at the front there. Alright, so we're probably gonna get level 3 ganked, like, without a doubt, so we're gonna pop our potion here. Uh, very likely that would be a 3 camp, so she's gonna do, like, 3 camps and then gank from the side that she started on, just to avoid the ward. We can also just let this slow push back in the west, and this guy's doomed because he's out of potions, essentially. It's really important that I hover top side of mid, though. If I don't, I will die. Also, I'm still getting lag somehow. Your voice is perfect, thanks. There's no TP on this guy, so he's forced to stay in the lane if he wants to play a game here. All right, you're dead. See you later. We see Elise above us, so there's really no way we get punished here. We could also just rotate to this Kazakh's grab. The goal here is just to push this wave to make sure that she loses something. She's going to repel to a minion without a doubt, so if you come here, we... Yo, my Kha'Zix just does not give a fuck. Okay, <laughs> I'll take it. At least no flash. I'm not moving, you're gonna fuck my recall for no reason. If you wanted to kill her, you should've just came at the beginning. That's all I'm gonna say. You had every opportunity to kill her with me, you just chose not to. Oh, we got crap, it's good. A can wave is actually slow pushing to me as well, so this is like huge that I'm losing basically nothing. Since I already have like a 9 CS lead. I just hope cannon doesn't die. But these minions are gonna group up and it's gonna be like 9 versus 7. Or at least should be probably bot side of the map again on like Gromp and the Wolves. She's probably already done Gromp and she's on Wolves right now.
Alright, not bad. I just need a few of these minions. I just want to control the lane to be over here, so it's a little bit harder for me to get ganked. Obviously, at least has no flash, so it's pretty hard for her to play now. But if we hit 6, we just auto-win this matchup, because she just doesn't get HP items that early. He actually bought first time Ruby. See, that's kind of the thing, is people assume Swain's unkillable, but this guy has, like, all his HP is tied to items and his passives, so if he doesn't get early items or passives, he's got, like, base HP. Kind of hard to beat. Wow. This guy actually... I would have died if he didn't play aggressively, because I would have 100% walked forward. Huge. Alright, we're gonna put that on the ball preemptively. This guy's dead. Hitting. This guy lived with 1 HP. I got slowed by something and I couldn't move. I don't know what it was. Swain W. I'm missing so many minions right now. I just lost that on like 450 gold. Kind of crazy. There's no way. You're actually a psychopath. <laughs> There's no way. Dude, stop. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I, I mean, eventually I will flash, but... Okay. Kill them all. They all deserve to die for what they've done to me, on god. Take everything from them. Alright, I'm gonna go tier 2 boots. I feel like <laughs> it's a necessity. <laughs> oh my god, dude. And my minion wave is slow pushing to me. It's just, I am so lucky today. I don't know what to say. First time Kindle gem. No respect. It should be free dragon anyways. But I can rotate if I need to. Alright, I'm trying to get at least like 400 damage in on Swain and then should be a little bit better. This guy's pretty much zoned off the wave now with that HP threshold since I can kill him. I do enough damage with Ignite and a 5 ball, 4 ball. Pull minion wave and you just constantly cycle it downwards so it stays outside of tower range and you're like golden. There's just no way for him to farm without instantaneously dying without flash. I missed my cannon auto, so I immediately W it. Minion block's insane. I think Elise is in the side bush right here, so... It is defaulting back to a slow push. But right now it's currently still on our side. I should have kept that one minion. We're gonna have to go for the ward real quick. Alright, we're going for the kill at this point. I need to put down one more ball. Unlucky, dude. That, I pretty much 6 ball ulted him. Um, unfortunately, he got his ult off, so just drain tanked a little bit of it through Ignite. But if Elise wasn't there, it would have been a pretty good solo. Tragedy strikes. But he is losing pretty much 8 minions here, and I didn't have a shutdown, so I guess it's fine. Oof. A lot of balls, indeed. You're lucky because I'm watching? Thank you, Kenshi. Alright, so if there are ADC AFKs, when I get like a really great commentary game, I'm gonna fucking scream, dude. This is like any time I have a good game, it's like, oh, it's no longer worth using because somebody left the game. Haha. <laughs> so legit, even though this is the perfect commentary, perfect game, it, it literally means nothing, because...
screaming, dude. If you ping a bush and you know for a fact they're not in the bush, then you should legit just, like, don't ping the bush. Like, that is so fucking obnoxious to get spam pinged like that. Oh, she's back. There's hope. He's just having internet problems. Alright, there's definitely now a star still above me. I refuse to accept any other situation. I'm level 9 though, so I have a huge damage spike from uh, Transcendence. I'm here. We just make sure we do not get all in. I'm gonna wait for his ult to run off before I press R. Okay, not bad. Protect me. Thank you, minions. Look at that 280. my cannon. I'm pretty sure we're still going Leandre's anyways. Leandre's burn is just huge this game. to the walls. The only way we roll. But if we don't have balls. Balls Garana Soda. Oh, that's a lot of coals. Ziani, what's up, Shanks? For the other methods, I just use my imagination. Gotcha. Uh oh. Surely we don't die here. Looks like I need the group. You might want to flash downwards if possible. I'm like positive he's in this bush up here. Oh, he was in the bush. <laughs> okay. Who are you, bro? I don't know. Who am I? Who are you? What is life? Is there any meaning to the world? Is this really an Imperial Mandate Swain midline? I really do be like that. How are you, bro? <laughs> Doing good, thank you. What about you, Shanks? Why Kai says that she rage quit because her team uh, 1v3'd me mid and lost. So, he doesn't want to play the game anymore.
I refuse to press R. What the fuck? I'm literally watching your videos on YouTube about Vex and destroying these creepy diamonds like puzzles. Your voice and guides are awesome. As fuck. Glad I could click on your Twitch link and get you live. Yo, thank you, Anton. I appreciate that. Welcome to stream. Hi, Bear, what's up, Gooden Talk? GG. But yeah. Oriana versus Cinder lane's pretty common, I feel like. I should play... I enjoy the Oriana part of this, but... Something that a lot of Ori's do bad, badly in this matchup is they trade too much for no reason. Because at the end of the day, you are running Aerie. I don't think you really ever run Aerie except for... I guess you can if you want. But she's basically already lost. Like, you see how many HP potions she's burned trying to just auto me for no reason? It's all completely avoidable, because you just don't have to trade if you don't want to. Like, of course, it's my job to force trades and all that. Like, right now, her Q and W is down, and she walks up still. Takes a bunch of three. Obviously, if I land E, it's a little bit better. But she's out of potions completely. I still have another one, so I'm pretty much up, like, 200 HP. When she walks up for this minion, we'll just go for an auto or Q. But if she gives me an early kill like this, then it just makes the game unplayable for her moving forward. But we're gonna play for a level 3 all in. And you're dead. Alright, so we're gonna push this lane as fast as we can. We'll walk away afterwards. And the goal really is just to get this wave shoved in because we want to deny her CS, but unfortunately TP is gonna come through. So at this point, it's a little bit of a fuck situation. Because Lee Sin definitely has a gank timer right now. 3 o'clock to 3.15 is just like super easy to gank. Now I'm going to trade flash for flash 100%. <laughs> okay. Unlucky. I should have known better. Fortunately the wave's fixed. And he might go for a tower dive. We never know. We need to make sure we're actually looking at her screen. Yeah, he skipped... He was, he was already done with his 3 camp, like you see 12 CS, that means he's done 3 camps. He's waiting for Crab to spawn at 315. Uh, if I knew what side of the map he started on, if I had paid attention level 1, it would have been a little bit easier to predict up. Yo, Die Dub, thank you for the gifted tier 1 sub to Frothing Cook. Can I please get some Ziani Struts in chat and honor? Thank you. But we're in a really good scenario right now. Even though I did burn my flash and I'm currently down flash, I don't really need it to win this matchup. Now, clearly, this is slow pushing towards them, so I'm a little bit overextended on this next, like, minute and a half, but... We're just working our way towards 6. Once we have level 6, we'll have Ignite up as well. And we should do enough damage to just one tapper if we want to. How do you know where he starts level 1? Well, you either put a ward or you see what the leash is. Some champions can do leashless, like Kane, but... Most people in lower elos will 100% always get a leash because they just want to be faster. So whichever lane gets there late, typically. But we do want to make sure we're playing aggressively and actually get some damage in. Because we're working towards killing her once our ult and ignites back up, so we need to actually get chip damage in. We'll go put a ward though since we're slow pushing in currently. But you'll see this is slow pushing back to us now. I have no flash. I can technically keep pushing for pressure, but I don't need it because my Rek'Sai is already on the map. If Rek'Sai is already doing something on the map and I don't need to rotate to it, which is pretty much 100% it's already done, I can just let it slowly come towards me. And this is really important because it makes it harder for me to get ganked, but also makes it easier for me to kill Ori. Because you see how far she has to walk up to my tower now? It just makes it easier for me to burn her flash if I get a, like, a good favorable trade. So we see Lee Sin, which means we can play aggressively if we want to. We're going to zone her off the wave completely by standing between her and the minion wave. Because now she has to enter my range to do so. 
And that's like a really, really important asset to remember and understand is that if you can zone somebody off completely and you have information to do it, you should 100% do it. Now, missing every single Q here is actually pathetic because we do have kill potential. But she is losing a lot of minions currently, and that's something that we want to take advantage of. If I had land the first three kills, Qs, she'd probably be dead right now. I'm just not good enough. What can you do? And she went double D-ring, which is actually just kind of cringe. I'm not going to lie. We're running out of mana now because we keep using all of it to wave clear. Oof, that's a really bad one. But still, Rek'Sai is still bottom. I don't need to move for anything. If they're playing vertical map right now, it's just walking up right now, it gets me ganked, as it does currently. But in order to do a full combo, we need um, 120 plus 50, 170. We need 270 mana to do a full combo. So I'm going to try and pop my... I, I don't understand. You're out of mana as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm down to deathmatch yet. No cap. Sure, I let him go in. Good fight. Okay. And Rek'Sai. I hope Rek'Sai gets it. I feel like Rek'Sai gets it. Just going to try and flash QW me, so I'm going to bait it out. I missed. I didn't get it. Help me push. I was playing the very apex of the range, and I was trying to get her to flash forward so that she would not have escape. She probably could have just walked away if she committed the flashing towards her tower. But because we kept giving her the illusion of turning the kill around, she just stayed for no reason. Also, there's no reason to take this ward right now because it's delaying my tempo, but... I'm back. Welcome back, senpai. But yeah, they effectively lose mid-jungle just off of this play in particular. We're gonna go buy some items. I'm gonna skip Lost Chapter just because I really don't give a fuck. I want Dark Seal stacks now. And the good news is, unfortunately, we don't have Ignite, but we did burn her flash, which means we have a lot of mobility windows to work with. She can't dodge any of her skills now, so we could just force an EQ in. I'm gonna try and save as much mana as I can, though, since it's important. But we can actually just run top here if we want to as well. Unfortunately, we are going to lose minions as a result of doing it. But this is like a huge play if we connect it. You're kidding, right? <laughs> Alright, so it's a waste of my time basically, is what we're seeing here. I'm going to have to tax top lane as a result. I'm 100% taking this cannon. You're kidding, okay. Well, that's cringe. Or he's bottom right now, so I'm not even losing anything mid either. We should definitely tower dive this, so. Okay, it's huge. Good job. And we could probably take in our play while we're at it. Now, of course, this entire time we're losing like three minion waves mid splitting XP, but it do be like that sometimes. If Rek'Sai had not missed the W, this fight would have been like completely different. No cap. If you're wondering why I'm dropping a ward in base, it's because I acknowledge the fact that I'm not good enough to drop all my wards, so I'm doing it to inflate my vision score to make it look like I'm a more competent player. If you ever see somebody dropping a ward in base, just know that they're doing it for inflation purposes. Sometimes people have stuff like uh, Ghost Bora, where their ward decays and they get a stack, and it's good to actually drop your ward as fast as possible. But you want to typically drop it in lanes and have them clear it so that you get the instant value from the Ghost Bora as well. Yo, Ash, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime, and welcome back to the Platonic Harem. Can I please get some Ziani struts in chat and honor? You know what? Fuck it, I'm flashing. 
I didn't think there was going to be four people there, obviously. I thought I could outplay it, and then I realized my ult was down. That's just me not paying attention, honestly. I'll gladly take the flash burn. We did do a really good job sidestepping Amumu Q and R, though. Huge. Massive. I do want to get some chip damage in starting now, though. Actually, I think she's dead if I full combo. She has. Okay. come. I always forget my damage output because I don't do uh, number testing for Cinder the way I do for Vex. I know how much damage I do on Vex at every item stage and every level, but for Syndra, it's just kind of in intuition at this point. Is a full combo a 6 ball ult or 7? It's uh, however many balls you can fit. If you have to do a fast combo, which means you don't have much time to work with before they get to safety, then it's typically going to be a 5 ball ultimate. But if you can slowly push them off, then it'll be 6 or 7. And of course CDR plays a, a way into it because you have to cycle balls with your WQ. How many what? Balls. Alright, if you're wondering why I'm staying at this point, it's because I have lost chapter 1900. It's definitely an overstay to be in lane still, but as long as we see where Lisa is bottom, this play doesn't really matter. It's just free money. Or he can't kill me even if she comes here, so I just need the money. And now that we technically, not even technically, we have completed Ludens, it is fair assumption to say that I have become God. I will is the command of everything. We're also going to swap to a blue trinket now. But typically, whenever your bot lane takes tower, they're going to rotate the mid so they can put more pressure on the entire map through uh, middle objectives, central objectives. Uh, this kind of sucks for us as midliners because we have to lane against typically like 10-0 junglers or omega fed side laner. But in this particular game, when we have a big advantage like this, being side lane is good because we just win 1v1 or 1v2 as long as I'm paying attention. But there's no reason for me to go topside right now. The only objective on the map is Ocean Drake or Cloud Drake, whatever it is. Our team should be doing Dragon right now since we're ahead and it gives us another win condition to close the game out with. But we will continue to grab experience, continue to put pressure on the map. My team doesn't have to fight here at all if they don't want to. They just choose to do so because we're up like 3-4k gold. How do you feel about Leandris? Leandris is good if you're playing against a lot of melee or tanky champions. A lot of champs in the game right now are getting like naturally 3000 HP, so... I get 600 gold from this tower for free. So my item state is like ridiculously ahead of everybody else. We probably would go Void stuff in an ideal world, but I think these players are so bad that we'll get away with Shadow Flame. But yeah, I used the wrong ward on accident. I do want to kill somebody here in transition. This pretty much is guaranteed to work every single time on the first time. Unfortunately, Tank Amumu with plated steel caps uh, lives from my combo, apparently. That was effectively a 6-ball ultimate on a guy with only one MR item when I'm up like... 3k gold. Kind of cringe. Yeah, but we aren't pressuring mid right now and topside. I do want to reset and spend my 1.8k gold, but it's also fine for me to apply pressure here in the side lane. It's really important that you spend your money when you're going to be doing active things, but if I'm not really participating, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we'll rotate into this. I don't want to get full comboed by Mumu, but I might as well. He's gonna flash, isn't he? He is. Let's see if we get kited out or what. Oh, he fucked up again. Or she did, rather. My Rex is not having a good time whatsoever with the whole W thing. Who is this, anyways? I don't even remember what their top laner was. Aatrox? Oriana TP? Oh, she just TP'd in, then recalled. Alright, at this point, we're gonna go in yellow, right? we're gonna buy Shadow Flame. Um, Shadow Flame is really re oh, Guys, I want a fucking YouTube video! I can't use it if it's a 15 minute surrender! Cringe! Oh my god, every fucking game I win is just fucking unusable. Well, this is a pretty standard matchup as well. Honestly, what it comes down to is how well you play level 1 for 3. If you play level 1 for 3 correctly, Zed can't really play the game, so... 
you force him to walk for you to access the minion wave so that way he's not able to shuriken for free and if he does shuriken a minion you need to understand that's a six second cooldown so anytime this guy walks up and he is queuing a minion which is 100 percent telegraphed you get a free auto a free queue pretty much anything that you want realistically there's nothing he can do about it because he has to enter your range in order to farm so right now he's got nothing and we know he has nothing because he just queued in front of us. We get the free chance to just, you know, walk up and do anything we want. And it's really, really important that you play level 1 for 2 correctly. And I've said this multiple times, but essentially if you do not burn enough HP from Zed, um, he will eventually just out-sustain you because he has 3 health potions, right? So if you do 0 damage to a Zed level 1 for 2 when it's the freest opportunity in the game, and he then gets access to damage and he pokes you out, you kind of just lose. So playing the game correctly is a huge boon, a huge advantage if you will. Now clearly you shouldn't just miss all your skills because it's a waste of mana, but... He got me. That was a good sidestep. But he's got one health potion left, I've got two as well. But he actually dodged that. Oh, dude, 80 mid laners are so bad. They're so bad. They play broken champions and they're just so bad. But, like, none of that's possible unless I play actively on level 1 through 2, as you saw. And the reality is, every time I do a coaching session for center or anything else, you guys are just afraid. Like, you don't want to fight, even though you're playing a champion that, like, dominates early. Like, she's a dominant mother, a dommy mommy with huge mommy milkers, and yet you guys are still afraid. You're terrified. You play like six screens away when you're playing one of the most gorgeous god tier champions of the game, a literal goddess. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, why do you refuse? Do you just not like Syndra? Yeah. But at this point, we do have a some advantage. He does come back, and another huge thing is that when you delay Zed Power Spike like this, just denying him farm in general denies him from getting a uh, Serrated Dirk, and Serrated Dirk is a huge power spike for AD mid laners because it allows them to penetrate armor. So, if you kill him or you fuck him up in lane phase, you're basically making the game infinitesimally easier for yourself. And it's huge, like, it's a, it makes a huge difference whether or not somebody has Serrated Dirk on first recall, or it takes them until, like, level 7. Because that's the difference between having effectively 45 armor or having effectively, like, 30 armor. Now, I could 100% be poking better. I don't have refillable or anything, so it's a little bit harder for me to put myself in harm's way. But just remember, ZW is, like, 24 or 22 seconds level 1. If he uses W aggressively to do poke damage and he fucks up, or he just does land it, just fuck him up. Like, I use EQW, I make distance, I've already used all my skills, I don't need to walk into him anymore. He wants his minions, so we just apply pressure. And I don't mind Twitch just getting a whole bunch of damage for free. Because it does give us a kill window at 6, and that's what we're playing towards. If this die doesn't find a chance to recall, then he just dies at 6. So we're building up a wave, I've got a huge XP advantage because he's currently missing out on these four minions in terms of XP. And if he leaves, he just loses all these minions. So at this point, we're going to start hard pushing. We want him to stay in lane. If he recalls right now, it's pretty bad for us. Okay, and now he's just losing out on minions. And we can actually tower dive him technically if we play it correctly. We have Ignite in 12, so. Okay, once score trends out, honestly, we just walk up and we eat the ball. Okay, huge. Let's push the lane. We'll deny him another six minions. We'll go spend our money. And we're out of here. Wait, was that plate? Holy shit, I thought the plate was already popped. I just lost 160 gold. Level 1's 20 seconds. Alright, still good. Alright, I thought about going Sork Boots just because I want to roam, but... I feel like I'm just going to spam skills infinitely, so might as well play through Lost Chapter. 
This guy probably does have serrated Dirk now, or he's like super, super close. But just because we dominate him this hard in the laning phase, you can see how much easier it is for me to play aggressively, knowing that he's missing a ton of damage. Um, I think my set actually wins if he played it slightly better. Unfortunately, it gets a roam kill, though. But since he's top lane, I have to push mid as fast as possible. I've been playing League for 10 years. Yo, Ale, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime, and welcome to the Platonic Arm. Can I get some Ziani strats, guys? I set to make sure I do not get a Mordekaiser Death Gripped. Okay, well, I got Mordekaiser Death Gripped. <laughs> okay. Now, fortunately, I'm close enough to my tower where it doesn't matter, but... If my W landed before Death Realm snapped, I would have killed him. Unlucky. Now, unfortunately, there's no way I ever do enough damage to an Orn to get a meaningful kill. Unless I had ultimate here, uh, he would have died off that. I need to bounce, though. I've got way too little HP for Zed. This song's way too fucking over the place. Alright, let's go. Triple Longsword, this guy is actually down bad desperate. Just kidding, he's not down bad desperate. I'm down bad desperate. If I wanted to grief, I could buy a cloth armor, but it's just not really worth it for me right now. Is it always safe to recall in the middle of the lane like that, or should you walk the turret before recalling? If you know where people are, it's better to recall as fast as you can for tempo purposes. That's like the main difference, right? Uh, legit one hit. One hit. Which might get it. Nope. That's lame. I can't believe I didn't do enough damage. Yeah, I mean, we were going to zone him off this way. There's no way he ever gets to get... Okay, he got cannon. Unlucky. I'm splitting XP two ways, but like the goal is to hit level 9 here to upgrade my Q. Fortunately, we have Prya for the whole... I'm gonna try and hit him at max range EQ. Just kidding. It's not even worth it. Like, I just delayed my recall even though I could have went back for free. Is this Leandre's game? No, it's not Leandre's game. I could go Leandre's, sure, but I'm just gonna go Ludens because I'm massively ahead. You gotta remember, like, how many AP champions are on my team right now? Only one, right? Technically Twitch, so like 1.5. If I go Leandrians, I'm missing out on a bunch of penetration, and penetration is what allows me to absolutely merc Zed, Jinx, and Lulu. It does give me more effective DPS to go Leandrians against Orn and Mordekaiser, but my goal isn't to one-shot Mortar Orn, it's to instantly kill their backline. And if I kill their backline, they just have no damage, and they won't be able to do anything, realistically. Yeah, but my E is currently on cooldown, I'm just gonna make distance. This person could technically ult me off of this, but he doesn't have enough energy for it to matter. But we are almost level 9. We want to make sure we play around this cannon. So we get damage in, we walk away, make sure we're playing around our cooldowns. If we go for another auto after burning all of our skills, the only thing we're doing is giving him a chance to do damage back for no reason. As a stream going? It's going pretty good, Demonic. Thank you. Okay, not bad. We burn Ignite again. I queued for when he came directly out of the ultimate. And because I tried to make distance immediately after the stun, I didn't give him the chance to uh, ult my ult, specifically. What do you think of Crown Syndra? I'm gonna be honest, guys. If you build Crown on any champion in the game, you should just instantly be permabanned. Also, Tom Baby, what up? Why do you go Aerie not Electrocute? Aerie has a 6 second cooldown, Electrocute has a 20 to 25 second cooldown. Aerie is applicable on every single poke skill. Electrocute is only applicable on a 3 hit combo. It is infinitely more valuable to use Aerie if you're trading often. If you are not trading often, then Electrocute or Comet would be better, because it gives you more room to play around, you feel. This person has nothing right now, so I'm just going to trade him. Like, the moment he used his W and he has no ult, there's like no way he actually does anything to me. 
But Aerie's really good in short range matchups because you can just apply it over and over and that gives you the ability to find a kill window. Electricate's really good for like a full full kill if you're able to one shot somebody. But with MR items the way they are currently, it's not as effective. Yeah, and we just got a bunch of free points here. Krana's uses for Rengar just build Zhonya's. If you're building Crown just to survive at 25 minutes and completely not acknowledge the point of Syndra, the only person you're hurting is yourself. Like, there are very rare situations where you go Crown, like triple assassin comps. But if you're building Crown as a defensive mechanism instead of just playing the game correctly and then building Zhonya second, it's like you're effectively playing the game from behind because you're scared. Don't play a champion that's aggressive if you're going to be terrified of playing it. Zed's triggered. <laughs> Monk, why are you making things political? Especially when you're saying it ironically. Uh, the champion playing currently is Syndra. Yeah, I don't know why I'm playing against the full tank Orn, but... I'm sure it's fine. I'm saying that sarcastically. I know why, guys. I just... I'm being mean. I enjoy instigating. I know you. Well, we see three people top. Zed gets his... free kill. I guess we'll take it. This guy used his only skip mechanism in front of me, so... I feel very confident going for an all-in combo after that. And I have flash to follow as well if he doesn't flash. But yeah, it's really nice to take tier 2 towers. Tier 2 towers are worth 600 gold each. Uh, we have vision of 3 people on the map right now. Only person who could be here is Mordekaiser, technically. The worst case scenario is that Mord still has ultimate available, and just ults me from above, at which point that's the only way I technically die in this situation. So that's the only thing I have to play around actively, is getting Mordekaiser ulted. Okay, so I could technically keep going, right? But 2k gold in the inventory, we have Dragon in 2 minutes. It's better for me to spend my money now and come back to lane with a huge item spike. Because this is effectively Hextech Alternator plus Ludens. Is she a mid laner? Yeah, she's a mid laner. She can sometimes be played APC. Which is ability power, carry, bot lane. I hate being bot lane though. It's all good though. We're actually fed enough to where Void Staff second is technically better because we already one shot people with our current item state. I'm um, going Void second means that I have more damage potential against their melee frontline. Because either way, if I full combo with their backline with my current items, they die. So, it's overkill for me to build Shadow Flame second. Whereas Void Staff would give me more versatility in terms of item progression. But yeah, we currently see two top, one mid. We have three people on the map showing Zed was last seen bottom. Only person that could technically be here right now would be Lulu or Jinx. Looks like it's Zed. Yeah, and the moment he- if he leads with his ultimate, and I have ult up still, it's just so hard for him to win without hiding, like, Prowlers. So he's just trying too hard to outplay me when there's no way to, like, beat this item advantage that I have. And that's kind of, like, one of the easiest ways to snowball and solo queue is understand that your lane opponent, when they fall behind, will always try to beat you even though they're behind in items. If you see it in every game, your top laner dies once or twice, and then they just keep killing themselves trying to fight for no reason. It's the exact same thing for mid lane. So if you consistently win lane, and get an advantage from mid, just for laning phase, you will have a huge impact on every single one of your games. Pretty much every single one of your games. Now, my entire team's playing for Rift Herald. I'm the only play for them on the bomb side of the map. If Orin ulted me right there, I'd probably be dead. So we're just gonna go and reset and grab our needlessly large rod, and we're gonna spam ping Hextech Drag. I don't think the Mord kill really matters at this point. Best matchups for Syndra? Pretty much anyone who's low mobility. If you can land QE on Syndra, you just have so much damage follow up. But a lot of these matchups have either high mobility or they can like mitigate your combo by going invulnerable. 
like Vlad W Z R. Some bad matchups just outrange you like a zero. Yeah, but we're gonna go for a five ball just flash ult here. So we let the ball spawn after the ult, and then we can just E five balls, and it's like impossible to dodge the backup stun. Yo, my Zed is molding right now, dude. Keep in mind, this person still has ultimate, so I'm trying to play it as slow as possible and maintain range. If he ults me without my ult, it's kind of sketch. Red Smite's pretty OP. Alright, not bad. Good job, guys. What should the title of the video be, guys? How to win every lane? Win every matchup? Win every single lane phase? What is the best definition for this? It's gonna be another forfeit, no doubt. I'm pretty sure he might have been able to kill me there, actually. It's kind of early to take an inhibitor, but at least we have Baron in like two minutes that we can do. We have enough for Shadow Flame as well. Let's bounce. So far, I've been playing Ari, Vlad, and Fizz. They're all my favorite champions so far, and I've only been playing mid for now. I'd like to try jungle when I get a bit better. I think jungle is the easiest la lane to learn, to be honest. Or roll, rather. It's very straightforward because you're just killing monsters that can't really fight back. So it's you're just learning how to be the most efficient you can, which is something most players don't really get a grasp on. Trigger enemy soy mid laner with superior intellect plus logic. You know, I'm not... I feel like that title would unironically succeed, Bach. If a C9 employee thinks so, I think 100% I should go with that title. My videos lately haven't been as good just because I've been kind of low-key upsetty spaghetti bun. Full commentaries are like my bread and butter. I just really haven't uploaded great full tie full commentary. Also, whenever I post a low elo video, those go like 10k views and I post an actual like Chandra game, it's like fucking 2,000. There's no winning, dude. I just have to sabotage every single one of you and upload gold games only, even though every single one of my accounts are currently masters. Like all seven. Boom. I don't even know why we're bottom at this point. We're just getting a pick before we rotate in the mid lane. I feel like I just kill her with a single R press. I just wait for minion wave though. The reason I didn't start with jungle is because I was told the hardest lane to play and the most important. It's the easiest, but it's the most important, which means you get flamed the most. But if you watch a single video from somebody named Doubtful on YouTube, it legit, it's just like the easiest fucking thing in the world. GG, thanks for watching guys. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to support content like this, and I hope you all have a...